those who are in our foyer, I'd encourage you to come on in. We've got a busy day ahead of us. Are you ready to worship the Lord? I'm going to ask that again because I wasn't very enthusiastic. Are you ready to worship the Lord? Amen? Uh, amen. We've got a song to start us off, so if you're able, please rise.
that. Shake your neighbor's hand, say hi, greet them. Well, fantastic. Awesome. When you get a chance, find your seat. There you go. That is wonderful. There you go. Awesome stuff. Well, guys, welcome to Dundalk Wesleyan Church. If you don't know who I am, my name is Chris. I'm the pastor of the church. I want to welcome you here for this wonderful day of worship. I want to thank those who are joining us online as well. Well, it's an exciting day. You're probably wondering, what in the world is this beside me? Uh, you know, I was in a rush, and I always like getting a bath before I get up here. No, no, it's a baptismal tank, and we're going to be having two baptisms today, which is awesome. Clap your hands. I've had a few curious onlookers trying to look and see. You're more than welcome after the service to come up, take a look at it, feel how cold the water is with your hand if you like. If the kids are coming up, just remember the parents have to be with them. We don't want anyone else going in there. You know all these cautions that I give about kids? It's because I was a kid, and any time there was something you could do, I did. So I know all the ins and outs. So just <laughs> saying you're free after the service. If you're curious, come on up, take a look at it. You're more than welcome to. And uh, we just don't want anyone splashing the water or... Uh, climbing inside to check it out, okay? Awesome stuff. Well, just a few announcements. Uh, tonight, Today after our service is our gratitude pot blessing. Uh, I hope you're ready to come and stay for the meal and enjoy. Uh, it's a great time for us to connect together. You know, we come to church to worship God, but a church grows in strength when we spend time with each other. So just encourage you to spend time with us, enjoying a meal. There's nothing like breaking bread together to kind of create those bonds. Talking about food, on October 16th, SCC is having their next dinner. That's the third Monday of the uh, of the month. We're already into October. Uh, uh, Carolyn, is there any, any no, do you know what we're eating? Turkey? Yes, there you go. I, I didn't know if she was calling me a turkey or, <laughs> yes, we're going to have turkey Yeah, 10th anniversary. Wow, that's exciting stuff. So good stuff with that. Um, also, you're, a couple of people have been asking me, uh, Don Hume had his surgery, his heart surgery this week, and he's doing well. And so, yeah. And he might even be home today. So you're free to give, send him a text and just say, hey, we're praying for you. Uh, you know, it, uh, it's just a blessing that he's doing so well, and we're looking forward to having him back here. A couple other things that are happening in the week that you need to be aware of. Uh, we have a men's Bible study that meets at the pastor's study at 9.30 on Sunday mornings, and they're studying the attributes of God. And we have a midweek ladies' Bible study that meets Tuesday here at the church at 10 a.m., and they're studying, uh, studying uh, on the Apostle Peter. So there you go. That's, I think that's all of our announcements. Oh, I know Dennis is going to bug me. It is the offer. It, it is, uh, what is it? Benevolence Sunday. And so you'll see a white offering box uh, at the door. If you have some loose change or what have you, throw it in there. That 100% of those, the money that's donated to that goes to help those in need. And we're always getting asked for help. So uh, if you have some loose change, feel free to do that. It's amazing when we toss in a couple of coins. How that all adds up and can make a, a world of difference. I think that's it for all of our announcements. I'm going to ask Andy to come up. He's going to be reading our call to worship, which is Deuteronomy chapter 10, verses 14 to 21, and he's going to open our service in prayer. That's my fault. Let's begin with our call to worship in Deuteronomy 10, 
14 to 21. To the Lord your God belong the heavens, even the highest heavens, the earth and everything in it. Yet the Lord set his affection on your ancestors and loved them. And he chose you, their descendants above all nations, as it is today. Circumcise your hearts, and therefore do not be stiff-necked any longer. For the Lord your God is God of gods, the Lord of lords, the great God. Mighty and awesome, who shows no partiality and accepts no bribes. He defends the cause of the fatherless and the widow, and loves the foreign, foreigner residing among you giving them food and clothing. And you are to love those who are foreigners. For you yourself were foreigners in Egypt. Fear the Lord your God and serve him. Hold fast to him and take your oaths in his name. He is the one you praise. He is your God who performed for you those great and awesome wonders you saw with your own eyes. Amen. That was from Deuteronomy 10, 14 to 21. You can look it up after too. Let's bow our heads in prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, we come to you with great thanksgiving. We thank you for the good things that, you're, that are happening here at the Wesleyan Church. We thank you for that. We thank you for your love to us, for salvation in souls. We thank you, Lord, for the baptisms this morning that represent souls. And we give the glory to you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for doing a work at your, your, in your kingdom and that we're a part of it. Thank you, Lord, for that. Lord, give us the grace and the mercy of, on Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for this day, for all the good things for us, for everything that happens to us. We give you thanks, the good and the bad. Father, we just praise your name that you'll... Honor, we'll honor you this morning in everything that we do, from singing to praying to just worshiping you, Father, as we give this day back to you. And we thank you for everything you've done for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. At this point in our service is uh, our time for our offering. If the kids could come up and give us a hand with that. You guys figure it out. <laughs> Do we have anyone else, a little little one who wants to help? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Love the enthusiasm. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for another week. We thank you for all the blessings that we have received. We thank you for the times where we really needed you. You've been there. We thank you for meeting our needs and exceeding those needs. We thank you for the work that we have, for the family that encourages, and for the friends who support. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's continue worshiping the Lord through music. of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Come bow before Him now with reverence and fear. In Him no sin is found.
the presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Be still, for the glory of the Lord is shining all around. He burns with holy fire, with splendor. go time for our kids corner if the kids could come up and sit in this front row be fantastic there we go awesome stuff so how are you guys doing are you doing good yeah you yeah good stuff i like that i know i would remember you welcome glad you're here there you go. What do you think of that thing over there? Is that, is that kind of neat, that baptismal tank? That big, big gray thing over there? Yeah? That thing way right there? Is that kind of neat, eh? Maybe? No? <laughs> Thinking about it? You'll have to check it out after just to see what it looks like. Awesome. So today, I brought something with me. I had my safety glasses. I've lost them somewhere in the church. So if you find a pair of yellow safety glasses, I pray really hard. Sometimes I have to wear them. No. <laughs> if you see them somewhere, uh, just uh, bring them into the administrative office. That would be great. So guys, I was going to talk about safety glasses, but I realized I didn't have them. But I have other glasses. I've got sunglasses. What do sunglasses do other than make you look cool? Yeah. Protect your, yeah, protect your eyes from the sun, yeah. There's something else? I think that's it. <laughs> You're going to say look good? To make you look, okay, there you go. Looks good. There you go. Anyway, guys, yeah, so we use sunglasses to protect our eyes. You got, have you guys ever seen safety glasses? Yeah. You have them at home. When do you wear your safety glasses? Oh wow! So when you're you're when you're doing some science experiments and making potions and everything, whatever it is that you're doing, yeah, mud, mud poisons. Yes, that's a good thing. You don't want any of that stuff to get into your eyeballs. Yeah, for sure. Well, I used to do electrical work, and I always had to wear my safety glasses because things could what what could happen if I didn't wear my safety glasses. Maybe get, yeah, my eyes might bug me or get hurt or something like that. I had a friend who wasn't wearing safety glasses, and he got a piece of metal in his eye one time because of that. And that, he had to get it, get that piece removed at the hospital. It was, and he was okay. His eyes were okay, but <clears throat> I wouldn't want to have to do that, right? So in this world, there's lots of stuff that we you, do to protect our eyes. We wear safety glasses and all that kind of stuff so that they don't get hurt. When I go, when I go skiing, I wear the, uh, my ski goggles so that it protects me from the cold wind and the sunshine and all that kind of stuff. 
And so we, use, we do all sorts of things to protect our eyes because our eyes are really important, right? You use your eyes to see. You don't want them to be hurt. But I'm going to share today a verse because not only should we be protecting our eyes from those kind of dangers like, say, a piece of, of uh, wood or mud going in our eyes, but also we're supposed to protect our minds. Now, the Bible says in Philippians 4, 8, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, Whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent and praiseworthy, think about such things. There's so many things that we're exposed to that go into our minds, and we're supposed to protect our minds. So I remember being a little guy, and I watched a really scary movie. And before I watched that movie, I had no problem sleeping in my bed in the dark. But that scary movie made me scared of sleeping in my bed by myself without a light on. And so what I'm sharing with you today is to say, instead of look, thinking about or focusing on those things that can hurt our minds, we need to be careful and protect our minds. And one of the ways that the Bible tells us to do that is to think of good things. And we can go to the Bible and be reading the Bible. And that would encourage us and fill our minds with good things. So just think about those things that you let in. could be from the things you listen to to the things you're watching. we got to be careful and focus on those things that are good and pure and right. Okay? Let's pray. Dear God, just thank you so much uh, for the words of wisdom that we find in the Bible. And uh, just help us to be aware of what we're allowing in our lives and in our minds. Help us to make the right choices so that we fill our minds with the good things you want us to have. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, we have children's church today. So uh, kids from, uh, is it junior kindergarten to grade 8? Yeah. Can go with our teachers. They're just right up there. So if you guys want to go, you can. Okay. Awesome. If, there you go. We're going to continue. I'm going to take those glasses off. <laughs> We're going to continue to worship God through music. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by. Still, still waters His goodness restores my soul
You know, one of the blessings I have at sitting at the very front is I get to hear all of you singing. You're doing a great job. So <laughs> there you go. Awesome stuff. Well, friends, we're turning to the Bible at this point. Uh, it's an exciting day. We're going to be celebrating baptisms. Uh, and uh, uh, we're going to turn to Romans chapter 6 right now. Chapter 6, we're going to read verses 3 to 11. And the focus, as you probably can guess, will be on the subject of baptism. So let's take a moment to pray. Our Heavenly Father, as we come to your word that we call the Bible, we ask for your blessing and for your leading during this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we're going to get right into Romans chapter 6, verse 3 to 11. Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? 
We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in death like this, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. Because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Well, over 2,000 years or so that the church has existed, it has practiced the act of baptism. Baptism isn't uh, just a church tradition that we do for the sake of tradition. It is uh, one of the two sacraments that Jesus commanded his followers to practice, the other being communion. And what the church has labeled as a great commission, which is found in the 28th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus commanded his followers to share the gospel, to share the good news of Jesus with the world, and to make disciples, followers, students of Jesus. And he also commanded us in this great commission to baptize those who have believed and put their faith in him. Jesus said, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded. If you're new to the faith, or if you're new to church, baptism might seem very strange. So let's take a moment to talk about how we actually perform a baptism. The word baptize means to apply water. So you guess it. Water's a major part in this uh, ceremony in which we do the baptism. There are three traditional ways uh, that people are baptized. There's the sprinkling of water, the pouring of water, and finally, what is called immersion or full immersion. I've been really working hard trying to advocate for the super soaker motion, but it's not happening yet. With sprinkling and with pouring of the water, or sprinkling and pouring, the water is applied to the individual's head. Third way, with full immersion, the person is lowered down gently into the water until they're entirely submerged. I've been asked by several people, which is the correct way? And to be honest, I can't give you a definite answer because Jesus never told us a, spe a specific way to apply the water. Now, in saying that, many people, including myself, lean towards immersion because it is how Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist in the Jordan River. And the Bible records how in the early church, people were baptized by full immersion as well. And I personally love the symbolism behind a full immersion. When the individual stand, comes to the water and they're standing there, that represents the old life. When they go into the water and they're fully emerged under the water, you can't breathe underwater. That's symbolic of the death of the old self. And when they come out of that water and they take their first breath again, that represents the new life, which has begun in Christ. Our scripture says, or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live. A new life. Three important questions that we should ask or find the answer to when it comes to baptism is who, when, and why should we be baptized? Now, I've already mentioned before that Jesus has commanded his followers to be baptized, and that alone is good enough for me. But along with Jesus' command to, in the Bible, or the command to be baptized, the Bible also records how the early church fathers, the apostles themselves, saw the importance of baptism. The book of Acts, record, Acts records how the apostle Peter shared 
uh, the gospel with those in Jerusalem. And he shared how, how Jesus had come to save the world. And when he did that, he told them to place their faith in Christ and then be baptized right away. The book of Acts shares these words from Peter. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And here's what happens. I love this. The, the book of Acts doesn't leave you hanging. After Peter shared these words uh, and shared the gospel in Jerusalem, the book of Acts records that those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. Man, what a baptismal service. You may think that uh, when it comes to baptism that you have to have it all together. I used to think I had to have it all together. Thank goodness we don't have to. You may think that you have to know your Bible from the front cover to the back, that you've got to have most of it memorized, that you've know that you're, you got to be ready for the performance and know it all, get ready for the exam kind of thing, but you don't have to. I mean, think about this. Do you, really, do you really believe that Peter shared the gospel with those 3,000 people who heard and accepted Christ by faith that day uh, and then say, okay, before you're baptized, we've got a six months class that you have to do and everything else? No. The Bible records that 3,000 heard the message and they were baptized that day. I think that's awesome. Of course, uh, there's other things that we should answer here, so let's look at these things uh, about uh, what we should do with baptism. Those who place their faith in Christ, they're baptized, and to, act to, and to the question of when we should be baptized, the answer is as soon as you can. So we've looked at how those things go together. We've looked at how uh, uh, those questions that we've asked, the who, the when, and the why. Let's continue on. Why should we be baptized? Baptism itself doesn't save you. I want to make sure that's clear, that baptism itself, the act of it, doesn't save you. We know that it is through faith and faith alone that we are saved. So why be baptized? Well, baptism is a public statement of, of your faith. When we are baptized, we share with the world that we are followers of Christ. That's why we don't do these baptisms in secret. When we are baptized, we're openly and publicly expressing our faith in Jesus. With baptism, we say to the world that we believe in and accept that Jesus died on the cross for us and that it is part of God's uh, redemptive plan. Yet baptism is more than an act of acknowledgement. It's also an expression of who we are as followers of Christ and the hope we cling to. Our scripture says in verse 5, if we have been united with him like this in his death, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. I'm going to ask those who are getting the kids from downstairs to come up because I'm almost done my message. Awesome stuff. Just as a wedding band symbolizes the unity that a man and woman share with one another as their lives are made one in matrimony, so baptism symbolizes the unity we share with Christ. Finally, baptism is, some, is a symbolic statement of our commitment to live for Christ. Our scripture says, in the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. With the symbolism of death and life, baptism is a statement for all to witness, all to know our desire to follow Christ wholeheartedly. It is a commitment in which we're saying that Jesus is our Lord. He is the leader of our life who we follow. And now, my friends, we're going to move into this time when we hold the baptisms. So I'm going to ask Kevin and Will, if you two can stand right beside me. Got a couple questions to ask you, and you can plop your towels right over there. So I'm going to ask Kevin and Will a couple questions, and after I've invited them to share a little bit about their faith and their decision to be baptized. So here we go. The questions I got to ask you. Do you believe in the God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that Jesus Christ, the Son, suffered in your place on the cross, that he died but rose again uh, that he is now sits at the Father's right hand until he returns to judge all people at the last day. 
And do you believe in the Holy Scriptures as the inspired word of God, that by the grace of God, every person has the ability and responsibility to choose between right and wrong, and that those who repent of their sin and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ are justified by faith? If so, please say, all this I steadfastly believe. All Awesome. Do you intend by this act to testify to all the world that you are a Christian and that you will be a loyal follower of Christ? If so, please say, I do. There you go. Kevin, I'm going to give you the mic if you'd like to share a few words. Um, as some of you know, um, I was born a Mennonite. I'm the youngest of 36 kids. So... Yeah. <laughs> um, my dad, we, we read the Bible every night. Um, it was our going to bed stories. But uh, my dad died when, he was, when I was 10. So I've been struggling to find a home where I can believe in my Lord. So I think I found it. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. Will, you want to share? Well, since being new to Dundalk and coming to a church on a Friday and listening to a few people sing, and they greeted me with such open arms and such, such uh, love and faith that I uh, decided to come here and Realize that opening up here is the best thing that has ever happened, and ba getting baptized means that I will be one step closer to our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and I am so grateful for everybody and for everything that I've gone through in my life, so thank you to everybody. Wonderful. So I'm going to ask you gentlemen to take off your shoes. Kevin, I'm going to get you to come in. And you can step right in. And I'm going to get you to sit down and put your feet in there. What a wonderful day, amen? amen? Smile at the camera. <laughs> Kevin, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen? Yay! Let me give you a hug. Let me give you a hug. Amen. There you go. Good stuff. Now, you just be careful as you step out. There you go. And, Will, I'm going to get you in here. There we go. Just uh, hold the sides. And I'm going to get you to step all the way down. And you can sit. So these guys are very thankful for those who assisted in setting up the baptismal tank because this water is as warm as a bathtub. I was asking for ice cubes, but... <laughs> Well, so glad to have you here, and I'm just so thankful that I can be a part of this as well for you. I'm so glad that, uh, that you feel the way you feel and that God is working in your life. I want you to know that I'm going to baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Yay! There we go. There, let me give you a hug. There you go. There you go. Awesome stuff. Good job. Let's give them one more hand. So you guys can go and dry off, and uh, just be careful when you go into the bathroom that you don't slip on the tile, okay? And we're going to continue on with our service by closing with uh, a song and a closing prayer. So let us continue the service with that song. This cornerstone, this solid 
God is good. Amen. Amen. Well, friends, we're going to close our time here. But just before I do, I want to encourage you. You know, one of the great things about seeing a baptism is it encourages others to take that step of faith, too. And so if you are feeling God nudging you to make that decision, if you want to be baptized, I want you to talk with me, okay? And, and we can uh, answer any questions and move forward from there. So that is fantastic. We're going to close in prayer. And remember, we have a, a luncheon after this. And so we're going to uh, also say grace in, in our closing prayer. So let us pray. Lord God, we just thank you for the decision that both Kevin and Will made to be baptized today. Their act of faith is one that encourages the church as it reminds us of both what God has done for us and through his son. And it is a reminder for us who we serve with joy and with faith. We pray and ask for your blessing on both Kevin and Will. Help them to continue to grow in their faith. We thank you for their church family who walk beside them, supporting them, encouraging them as they encourage us. Help us as a church to remember this act of faith and to continue to press forward, to continue to share the gospel message and the love of Christ with our community. Lord, we want to see lives changed and we want to see people come to the knowledge of your love and your grace and your forgiveness. Lord, as we close this time of our service, we we uh, want to also give you thanks for the meal and the time that we're about to enjoy. We thank you for those who have prepared the food, for those who are right now getting ready for that meal that we will enjoy. We just ask for your blessing upon the food and upon the time that we share together. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. And that concludes our service.